I'm now delighted in the next of our Mortal Kombat franchise documentary to be joined by the one and only Marjean Holden, who played the role of Shiva in Mortal Kombat Annihilation. I suppose, um, Marjean, it's 20 years nearly now since the movie of Mortal Kombat Annihilation. And uh, in terms of Mortal Kombat, uh, you still get mentioned uh, on a daily basis in terms of your life or in terms of your household. Um, not on a daily basis, but, uh, every once in a while, every once in a while, some, someone will pop up and somebody's kid will actually stumble across it and go, mom, dad, is that your friend? So every once in a while, it'll, it will pop up, you know, or the nephews will be like, oh, hey, this is kind of, did you? And I'm like, yeah, that was me. <laughs> And I suppose, uh, Marjean, to be part of a, a franchise that has spawned over 30 years, a sort of a, a, legacy, a legacy in terms of fighting games and still going strong even to this day. Uh, it's like uh, James Bond in one sense. When you're part of the Illumina, you're always part of the family. That's true. It is true. And it's, um, you know, it's one of those things that as an actor or as an artist, you always want to achieve and be part of something that's ongoing consistently, even if you're not in every single part of the franchise. It's nice to be actually still included in that energy of, you know, of the, of the brand. And can you tell me, uh, I know it's a long time now, but back in 97, <laughs> uh, when, you, when your agent came to you about the role of Shiva, was, was, did you originally try out for Shiva or were you trying out for any cast member role in uh, Mortal Kombat? And obviously, did you have to display your martial arts or the background? Yeah, I did actually um, audition for Shiva and it was the only role I auditioned for. And... It was one of those things where it was callback after callback after callback. And it was, it was, on, it was the most callbacks I had ever had for a role in my entire career as an actress. And yes, I did have to do martial arts and I did martial arts every single audition. So it was, can you be consistent? Is she consistent? And can she, you know, sustain doing these, you know, these moves over and over and over again. So yeah, it was, it was, I worked hard for that one. <laughs> and uh, Marjean, in terms of Mortal Kombat Annihilation in 1997, when you were, when your agent told you about the role, uh, in terms of, are you aware of Mortal Kombat? Were you aware of the video games? Had you seen the first sort of movie? And uh, in terms of that, what were your sort of memories? Were you familiar with the backstory or the concept of Mortal Kombat? I was. I was familiar with the video game. I was familiar with the character. I, um, you know, wasn't wasn't a big gamer or anything by any stretch of the means. So it was sort of like, quick, do a crash course in playing this video game and playing this character so that you know how the character moves and what the character is actually all about. So it was, it was, a, it was a study, you know? It was like, okay, get into the game, play the game, see how she moves and what's going to be, you know, sort of like, what are the signatures? Because each character has their signature moves so those were incorporated into our, into our characters in the movie. And I suppose, uh, Marachine, in terms of the first movie, Mortal Kombat, uh, that was released in 1995, your character didn't appear in that. So you didn't really have any sort of background to go on. Uh, so this was all new sort of a, a character. It was the first time she was appearing on screen in terms of a, a movie appearance. There was no sort of TV series before that as well. So obviously it was up to you to start to, put, to instill your own sort of take on the Shiva character. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, I didn't have anything but the video game to go off of. I, and what they, you know, what the producers, what John Leonetti, the director, wanted from the character. So it was sort of like um, just working together to come up with, you know, what she liked. And, you know, unfortunately it, it ended up not being as, um, 
as big on camera as it was in the script. Some some stuff did get cut out. You know, you always go through that that process when you're making a film, and you know, so not as much ended up on camera as I would have. Of course, I would have liked, <laughs> but it was yeah, it was it was pretty amazing. It was you know had to really dig in there and and find out like okay how can we make this time the best time for the character and i suppose that uh, marcin i spoke to one of your castmates on a mortal combat annihilation Gerard mcbee who played yeah. the role of Taro. and i was speaking to him about event his wardrobe in terms of his costume and he told me what it was like on a daily basis for him and the only sort of character that I can, th can think about who had a similar sort of wardrobe style in that sort of movie was probably yourself in terms of Shiva. What was it like for you in terms of coming in in the morning? Because obviously to sort of coordinate that sort of a costume. Actually, we see it on TV screen, but what did it actually look like in real life? Well, in real life, it was <clears throat> red patent leather that did not have a whole lot of flexibility to it. So that was very interesting to um, try to maneuver through and, you know, move in. So originally they had wanted to do prosthetic legs and all of these things. So they made the, the mold of my legs and then they made these sculpted muscular legs and then it just looked really weird <laughs> and they decided yeah that doesn't really kind of fit because the upper body wasn't fitting with the lower body so because the upper body was just all mine and the arms weren't as big as the legs and so it just ended up you know they ended up going nah let's just you know not use the prosthetic legs let's just use her legs um so it was, it was interesting because the costume ended up having, you know, because of the four arms, there were two prosthetic arms and my arms. So there was a harness that I had to wear underneath the costume that had, had the, uh, had the, you know, secure system for the actual other arms so that we could have those two arms as opposed to just CGIing the arms in. There were two practical arms, my arms, and then we would shoot with those arms and then they'd take them off. And then they, you know, we did a bunch of green screen with my motion, my motion so that the four arms were all moving in the same, you know, in sync. So it was interesting. <laughs> and on that point, was it uncomfortable on a daily basis? Was it a ton on your, was it a tough on your lower back had to carry that sort of uh, extra weight? And I obviously it was not in terms of, walking around was on set was a perspiring in terms of carrying that extra load. Yeah, it was a, it was an extra load. It was not comfortable at all. And, you know, it was one of those, yes, this is the glamorous part of being an actor, right? <laughs> getting up at five o'clock in the morning and getting into the makeup chair by six and having two and a half to three hours worth of worth of makeup every day to, you know, recreate the, the whole line of tattoos that went down the face and around here and around the arms and all down. So that was applied every single day I shot. So it was a, you know, it was like, okay, today, do we have the harness or do we not have the harness? And the days that we have the harness and the makeup and the arms, you know, but it was kind of fun, you know, every once in a while, because I could just kind of walk around like this with the other arms and, oh, so sorry, excuse me, pardon. I suppose, Marjean, in terms of makeup actors, then I suppose uh, yourself and Darren McBee, I suppose, were the only two inside there the whole time. The rest of the cast just had their sort of ninja costumes or their tight sort of costumes. So you must have came off a little close friend yourself and Darren sitting there for uh, 5 a.m. in the morning for two or three hours with six or seven people working on you. Yeah, and it was fun. And Darren and I knew each other before um, Mortal Kombat from, because I knew his friends that were in American Gladiators. So I met him prior to doing Mortal Kombat and then we got to work on Mortal Kombat together, which was awesome. 
And, you know, we've been friends ever since and actually just recently started talking about another project that he's doing. So that's fun. It's, it's nice because it was one of those, you know, we just, we spent so much time together and everybody spent so much time together in those months that we shot that, you know, it's like lifelong friends. Even if we don't see each other, we know that if we got together again, it would just be like, oh, we just saw you yesterday. And Marjean, in terms of those uh, fight scenes, the choreography and the stunt scene, uh, do you, was, how long was it from the time you first started shooting those scenes to achieve uh, to the actual sort of final? Were you given a deadline of a week maybe to get all those sort of shots in the scene shot, or do you have a, a longer sort of spell period? Because after all, it was a, a production budget. Yeah, it was production. And we trained, I trained for two months prior to us starting filming um, to do, to work, you know, the fights. And I worked with Jim, with uh, Mark Casso doing gymnastics and just working on the trampoline and all these different things. And so I worked out for, for two months, trained for two months prior to shooting. And then we started shooting and that stuff didn't come up until sort of a month or maybe six weeks into shooting. So it was like a good three and a half, almost four months before we actually shot all of the fighting stuff. Um, and then, and maybe, maybe even longer because we shot that in Thailand and we ended up shooting in London first for a month. So that's a, it was a, it was a, it was a pretty decent haul as far as trying to, trying to stay in shape <laughs> and keep the, keep the regimen going. Uh, in terms of the movie itself, uh, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, uh, one of the things people will look back in, at the movie and say is that there was a real shock in terms of the start with uh, obviously Lyndon Ashby didn't sign on for the, uh, the turnover for Mortal Kombat and uh, it resulted maybe on the scriptwriter killing off uh, the character Johnny Cage right at the start of the movie and that sort of really shocked the core audience of the Mortal Kombat yeah. the fans and probably didn't go down too well in many people's eyes uh, but uh, in terms of that it just showed everyone was ex ex expendable but in terms of that do you think maybe that's a bit more the Johnny character would have made some more of a favorable reaction? Um, <clears throat> yeah that was a there were there were a couple of twists and turns that were surprises and that was a that was a big one. So um, I think it may have made it a little bit more challenging for people to stay with it because that was one of their favorite characters, right? He's the hero. So, um, but it was tough because <laughs> it's like, okay, now we have to pick up where sort of like where Johnny Cage left off, right? And keep everything propelling forward. So, I mean, and I, I guess for me, I didn't have as much of a hard time, but then you've got the Jackson, and the Sonya Blade, you know, and Raiden who really had to, and Katana and, and Liu Kang who had to really keep pushing and driving it forward. So in order to not to have people go, wait, 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 but I wanna see, you know, let me see what's coming forward as opposed to, let me just keep focusing on Poor Johnny's back there. It I was mean, very tragic though, that death. It was not very nice. <laughs> and Marjean, you sort of went for a sort of future fantasy sort of role in this outer, uh, the battles being sort of fought in Outward, the sort of a continuation in terms of the, the first movie. And uh, it all sort of featured in this Outworld. And so I think uh, if you had gone back and maybe shot some scenes on Earth and sort of mixed it up as well, uh, in terms of that sort of demographic? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, that was an interesting, you know, let's travel through these portals into other worlds. And as opposed to it just being like, you know, in the first, in the first movie, it was just Earth here on the beach in the fighting, you know, it's mortal combat. And then we sort of get into this supernatural thing. And, you know, but I think that, was probably a good turning point for the series because then it just opened up a whole new world, right? For all of the subsequent, you know, franchises could, because there were so many different places that could, that they could go. But 
you know, I didn't really didn't have anything to do with any of them after that. So, but I think it was a good move. Yeah, and then Marachine, Mortal Kombat, in, in terms of this big rival in the 90s, was Street Fighter, and I, I suppose Tekken came after that. But where Mortal Kombat succeeded in terms of branching onto the big screen in terms of movies, and we had TV series like Mortal Kombat Conquest that was very successful, Mortal Kombat Legacy. Street Fighter tried this project and ended up once tried to make that transition and it failed, and, and it sort of didn't take off from there. Tekken tried it again in 2000 uh, in the period, and they sort of failed as well. Why do you think Mortal Kombat were, were successful in, in terms of the, as being the big fighting franchise that sort of made that break to where other big fighting franchises like Street Fighter, backed by Capcom and Tekken, backed by Nemanko, failed? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I was like, you said a, a mouthful right there. <laughs> You know, you know way more about that than I do. So, <laughs> but yeah, we, you know, I think the Mortal Kombat universe was just, you know, it was just one of those universes that was really totally blessed in, in um, diversification, you know, so that it had more of a, a more of an opportunity to, to branch out into you know, more franchises, you know, maybe than the Street Fighter. So, you know, I guess it just depends on the writers and the, you know, who's willing to put the time and the effort and the energy into creating something that, or being forward thinking enough that something that people want to actually see, so. And I suppose, Margie, at the time when you were shooting and filming uh, Mortal Kombat and obviously, you were saying to yourself, look, I've got on the back of a real sort of uh, well-known uh, uh, success story worldwide. Do you think at the time in 1997 that maybe three or four years down the line that there could have been another sort of a, a movie and you think to yourself, well, I could be back here again in four years time playing Shiva again? Or was that a possibility? Or did you think to yourself, well, this is a one-stop sort of movie that there mightn't be, uh, when you were on set, that there mightn't be any more takes or... Were you sort of surprised when there wasn't a, a third movie after three or four years? Yeah, I was sort of, su I was surprised. Um, it was, you know, it was one of those situations where, okay, she was dead, you know, because of the way in which she, you know, they all oh, just dropped this big cage on her. And I was like, yeah, however, in these kind of movies, you know, there's no rule that could have said that, hey, you know, the cage dropped and on that big giant, you know, platform was a portal that she just ended up somewhere else, you know, and here she is, she's back. She may be a little bit, um, a little bit more uh, mangled and angry, but she's back. And how did that happen? So it was one of those things where, oh gosh, I hope this, this, you know, goes on to be, you know, more. Um, unfortunately it didn't, but it was still, you know, the little never die. The legacy will never die. It'll always be there. Mortal Kombat, Annihilation, and Shiva will always be. And Marajin, in terms of that Mortal Kombat fan base in the video games, you know, Mortal Kombat X there, and just recently ago, sold millions of copies all over the world. I think something like 150 million copies in, in terms of Brazil, Argentina, Europe, Ireland, Germany, France, all over the world. At that time, when you start to finish the Mortal Kombat Annihilation, after two or three years, there's opportunity, the conventions come about, the opportunities, Mortal Kombat conventions to appear in those, speak about your time. And was that something that you were getting calls or emails about the whole time about different Mortal Kombat conventions here and there in different sort of countries? You know, it's like I didn't do as many Mortal Kombat conventions. I did a couple of the, the Comic Cons and things like that. But after I did Mortal Kombat, I ended up doing Crusade, the television series. Um, so the sci-fi conventions were a lot more, you know, a lot, lot more inviting um, to me than uh, Mortal Kombat. I mean, of course, I, you know, I would go and and participate and then it would be, oh yeah, we can talk about Mortal Kombat as well. But it wasn't ever really specifically like, oh, you're just coming as, you know, to represent the Mortal Kombat franchise. It was more like this whole sci-fi, you know, sci-fi genre being in 
you know, Mortal Kombat being in Crusade, being, you know, in these, you know, sort of the sci-fi movies that, you know, gave me that opportunity, but it wasn't a whole lot of like, hey, there's a Mortal Kombat convention and we're doing that. So it would have been nice. It would have been, been, been really fun, but there were a few, you know, conventions that, that I ended up doing. As a matter of fact, just talking uh, to Chris Casamassa, he told me who played Scorpion in, in the original Mortal Kombat movie, and he told me in terms of the the casting for Mortal Kombat, some of the best, he said, some of the best martial artists in the world tried out for both movies, but didn't actually get the, didn't actually get the roles because they didn't start to seem to fit into a certain character, or there weren't what the directors were going for in terms of uh, maybe their voice or what sort of way they were. Was that something you sort of thought of yourself? Could you get, were you sort of taken back in wow and some of the skills of some of the martial artists that tried out for Martin Combat and Annihilation that didn't get the roles? Because rumors were about that were some real top names tried out for, 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 for some of those roles, uh, some real world class martial artists and didn't get selected. You know, I honestly, I don't even really remember, but I know that the process was extensive. And there were so many people that auditioned for every single role, right? And it went on for, gosh, um, I mean, quite a long time. And if I think, you know, if I was in the position of the producers and the director and having to, to look at, you know, 20, I mean, back then it was probably, they probably saw 25, 30 people per role. If it was doing that these days, you'd probably see 50 or a thousand, you know, a lot. Um, but yeah, I do, you know, I, there's no doubt that so many people came through there and in that position, it's, it's gotta be so challenging because you have, you know, as a director, as a producer, you're looking at all different components. You're not just looking at one different, one aspect, right? So they're looking at a martial arts, a B acting, C, you know, profile, all of these different things. It's like, it's like, oh, is it, do they represent the character well? Are they going to get along with everybody else on set, <laughs> you know? And so in terms of that for Mortal Kombat, I mean, I don't really have a super strong experience with that, but I do know that for other projects, yeah, they'll see so many, so many talented and famous martial artists or fighters or things like that and you know the competition out there is extensive so even at that time you know when i went through it seven seven callbacks and so undoubtedly there were other women there that were probably better martial artists than me that that auditioned <laughs> you know and it, it just was that stroke of you know, divine, you know, intervention that said, yeah, this one's, you know, this one's for you. That was always one thing that one of my, my very first acting coach said to me, he goes, Marjean, one day it'll be you, the next day it won't. And I suppose, Marjean, uh, we'll sort of fast forward now to, in terms of the, the current sort of city, sort of climate, and uh, in 2021, uh, the, after 20 years, the third Mortal Kombat movie is coming to our screens in January. Trailers are out at the moment in relation to that. Uh, in, in terms of Mortal Kombat, uh, one of the actors, Lewis Tan, who's going to play one of the roles there, recently said in an interview that this Mortal Kombat, he said, it's more XR rated. It's more down the lines of a Dark Knight, a Joker, in terms of where it started going, in terms of that grim sort of backstory in nature. And I suppose back in 1995 and 1997, that probably wouldn't have been acceptable in that sort of era. But uh, in terms of the Dark Knight and Joker, it's opened up the boundaries for what is Mortal Kombat. It's grimace in sort of nature. It is adult themed. It is sort of a sinister tone. And you think it's probably is, is this, uh, is now it's getting back to its roots, its hardcore sort of fan base. Yeah, I don't know that much about this this new one. Just that they, you know, shooting down in in or have shot they shot down in Australia. So you know, I did hear that it's it's 
pretty hardcore. So it's going to be interesting to see if it can um, maintain the the audience and or refresh the audience that has been following it, you know, and gain new followers. So we will see. It'll be um, interesting to check out. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to like it. I'll have to go check out some of the trailers. Honestly, I haven't even seen any of the trailers yet. So I'll have to go check them out and see. And uh, Marjean, in, in terms of producers probably looking on now and they're probably financing, finalizing certain themes or scenarios. And if they thought about a cameo role uh, in terms of actors from the past and they will be said, we probably have some sort of a cameo role with sort of Shiva now for a scene. Would that be something that you'd sort of jump on on the plane down to Australia? Or is that sort of the time in your career sort of past? Or would that be something that would still excite you? Would it be a two thumbs up for Marjean Holden? God, I guess it would just be a matter of how many people I get to kill. And it, no, just kidding. <laughs> I, I definitely would 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 look into it because it would be exciting to you to go back and, and reprieve a role like that. Yeah. As long, you know, technology is a lot different these days now. So there probably wouldn't be, you know, weird prosthetic arms. It would probably just all be much more technologically easier to, um, to, to do. So that'd be great. And I suppose, Marjean, lastly, before I let you go, uh, the sort of final question, and probably the hardest one that I'm going to ask you is, is the, let's say there was a Mortal Kombat dictionary, and they put your character, Shiva, in the dictionary, and they left two sentences blank underneath, and they asked Marjean Holden to write those two sentences to portray a Shiva, uh, obviously, as you, as, as you played the character. What would you like those two sentences to read? Oh, God. Let's see, in terms of the character, um, <laughs> I think Shiva would probably say, take no prisoners. Okay. And that's about it. That's about it. Yep, take uh, no prisoners. <laughs> uh, on that note, Marjean Holden, a pleasure talking to you today to relive your memories of your time in Mortal Kombat back in, uh, back in 1997, playing the character Shiva. Still the only character to appear as Shiva in a Mortal Kombat uh, movie uh, to the present day, uh, the one and only, the original Shiva. Uh, pleasure sharing your memories, Mar Marjean Holden, uh, in terms of this episode of Mortal Kombat franchise documentary. And we wish you all the best in your future endeavor. Take care. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, Jim. Thank you. Fight.